way downtown. Now, if you're a Golden State fan, you're happy because your two guys are looking for the shots and they're dropping early. Curry fakes, puts up a three. Bang! Steph Curry back to his old salty tricks. Curry and the Warriors are going to win and head back to Oakland with a chance to win back-to-back -back championships at home in their building where they have been nearly unstoppable. Golden State outscoring Cleveland 15-3 to in an eight-minute span there in the fourth quarter, now taking a commanding 3-1 to series lead. Stephen A., what happened in Game 4? Well, a couple of things that happened. <clears throat> Number one, Clay and Steph were hitting their shots, um, and you could, you could see it coming. Uh, they found their stroke. Steve Kerr did an exceptional job of getting them open shots, I might add. He deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, and the Golden State Warriors played as a team. Uh, and the Cleveland Cavaliers played as individuals. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving took 33 of Cleveland's 38 shots in the second half. They took all but three of Cleveland's shots in the fourth quarter. The starting shooting guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers, named J.R. Smith, played all but five seconds of the entire second half and did not attempt a shot. And that's not his fault because they literally were not looking for him nor giving him the ball. Now, people want to point to Kyrie Irving and they want to sit up there and say, Kyrie Irving, uh, like 39 times in the series, he's come down the court without passing the ball and he's jacked up shots. Um, and he's hit a low, like 33% of those shots. But 50% of the shots he's made uh, has been when he's passed the ball first. So it's an indictment against him as a point guard. Maybe that's the case over the course of the series, but let me tell you what I saw last uh, Friday night. I saw Kyrie Irving, and this is where I disagree with my man Mike Wilbon from part of the interruption, the godfather, one of the godfathers. Mike Wilbon blamed Kyrie Irving. I said, I didn't see anybody that wanted the ball but Kyrie Irving. You know, maybe JR wanted to be good, but he's a spot up shooter and maybe he should have been fouled. But LeBron James certainly didn't seem like he wanted the ball. LeBron James played a horrible game Friday. He looked timid. He looked shy. He looked scared. I couldn't believe it. And I'm not even talking about the fourth quarter. I'm talking about the first three quarters before the fourth quarter. LeBron James didn't want to shoot. You can't beat the Golden State Warriors if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James is attempting 16 shots. It literally, and I'm not accusing him of being scared. I'm saying that's how he looked. Here's what I will make a stronger accusation about. He seemed more concerned about his numbers than about winning. Because if you end the day, if you're LeBron James, 25 points, 13 rebounds, nine assists, it was almost as if He's looking at the age of analytics and was saying to himself, well, five, ten years down the road, if we lose these NBA finals, they're going to be able to look at my numbers and say I did my job. That's literally how he looked. And I could not believe what I was seeing. LeBron James is universally recognized as one of the top two players in the world. I don't want him to lose this championship. I've been on the record saying that. Even though I picked Golden State to win, no, I, I would be happy to be wrong at least before Draymond Green's bogus suspension, I would have been happy to have been wrong because I literally don't want LeBron, somebody as great as him, to have five NBA finals on his losses. But you know me, Skip, I'm going to call it by like what I see it, game to game. And game four, I'm only talking about game four, specifically Friday night. LeBron James didn't show up. I don't give a damn about his numbers. 25, 13, and 9 means nothing to me. I will always remember this game as the game where I was looking for LeBron James and he could not be found because he would not shoot the ball. He passed up one opportunity after another after another. He looked literally scared to shoot his jump shot, like his jump shot has left him. And I don't even mind that. They take it to the hole all the time. Post up on the block. Do something. He did nothing. He did nothing. Kyrie Irving was the one guy that showed up and tried to get it done, that said, to hell with it, I'll do it myself. And I don't believe 
that one particular game is a game that Kyrie Irving should have been called out on. Maybe the others, but not Friday night. Friday night, that man was on the court, and the guy that was with him didn't want to shoot until Golden State stopped playing defense just so they could get the ball in bounds quick because of the intentional fouls that they knew were inevitably coming because they had the game in hand. That was when LeBron James got aggressive, and the last time I checked, that doesn't count. I am so with you and then some on this one. I also want to say I love Michael Wilbon. He's my guy. I started the debate process here at ESPN with him back in 1992, and I always listen when he speaks, and I was very surprised at his anti-Kyrie take after the game. I was a little surprised, but very proud of your take immediately after the game. I got to tell you, you were brutal on Le LeBron James. Right after the game ended, like within five minutes, I saw you on Sports Center, and you told it exactly like it was. And I, I thank you for that. Not, you're not talking about game three or two or one. You're talking about what happened, especially down the stretch of game four. That's what I do. Thank you. I picked Cleveland to win game four. I cannot tell you how disappointed I was in King James throughout the game, but especially down the stretch. I expected the same King James I saw force the action in game three. I was proud of him for the way he led his team and inspired his team in game three. And I, I saw no reason I shouldn't see more of the same in game four. My mind was boggled by what I didn't see from LeBron right away. You're right, Stephen A. There must have been a dozen times King James drove into the lane with, with what I thought was a defensive mismatch where he had the advantage physically over somebody, even Iguodala. And he shied from going up strong. I know Ty Lu got fined $25,000 for protecting LeBron and saying, why wasn't he sent to the line more than four times? Shot four free throws in the game. You know why? The refs are just saying, we're out, man. You are not earning our respect because you're going up weak or you're giving up quickly in the lane to kick it to, to a shooter. I was saying, what are you doing? And right after the game, to their credit, we had Vince Carter on. We had Brendan Haywood on ESPN. I doubt you saw them. But they echoed your, your sentiments. What are you doing, LeBron? You cannot be that passive, that tentative. You can't send that message to your teammates. I, I, I don't want to go up strong tonight. You don't? This is it, man. You, you can make it two to two going back to Oracle. It's your house. It's your show. It's your stage. National TV. This is your game. Then we get to the final stretch. And with 10 plus minutes left, LeBron James got a kind of an accidental offensive rebound and a put-back dunk. And I thought, wow, here we go. That put Cleveland up 83 to 81. And I'm thinking, good, got this. And you know what happened over the next eight minutes, as Molly pointed out to start this topic. It went 15 to 3 Golden State. Now let's look at the numbers of what happened over those eight minutes. LeBron James went 0 for 4 with one turnover. The, the four shots were two drives, one that got blocked by Iguodala, another that got blocked by Draymond. Should fouls have been called? I thought they were pretty good blocks. He wasn't going up strong, he, to use your word, he was shying from the rim, like begging for a foul that shouldn't have been called. And then he shied from the lane and took two threes that missed badly. That's his 0 for 4 in that stretch. He looked like he was playing tentatively to me while Kyrie which is going for broke. Kyrie's looking at him saying, okay, if you don't want to do this, I'm, I'm going all out. I, I'm going to go down with the ship here. I'm going to try. And Kyrie went one for well, seven in that stretch and missed his two threes. But he was playing with passion and aggression that I didn't see from, exactly. from LeBron. And so not I'm only sorry. That, he you know, has, and not only that, he has to go up against Steph Curry. Yeah. So he's matching te Steph Curry tip for tat. Yeah. You understand? Because you got to remember, Steph Curry hit like six, all six of his free throws in the fourth quarter. So, you know, that 38 is somewhat deceiving. Kyrie actually was giving it to him. Steph Curry gives him something. Kyrie Irving comes right back. 
And then there was a sense that everyone knew that Kyrie was like, bump it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to try yeah. to do this myself. Absolutely. Because, because listen, listen, Skip, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not going to say any names, but I took the liberty of calling several people and, 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 and running into a few folks while I was in Cleveland, friends of LeBron James. There's a whole bunch of people, just to be clear, that are going to have a conversation or Good. have already had Good. a conversation with LeBron James. Because yeah. I'm not going to say their names or anything like that, but yeah. everyone. Like What's Everyone up? was alarmed. His friends, loved ones, people like that. They're like, what the hell is up? Who is this? I don't that, know. That can't happen. Listen, LeBron, we only talking about game four. This is not something I, I'm not sitting there and, and, and putting a referendum on his career and all of this other stuff. The man, fry, I'm only talking about Friday night. It was one of the weakest performances I've ever seen him put forth. I would agree. He he literally, literally left his boys hanging because he wouldn't shoot. If LeBron James sat up here, Skip, and shot one for ten or whatever, in the four, I mean, he's just missing everything. You know, or, or, or he took 30 shots and only made nine or something like that. You know what I'm sitting here telling you, Skip? He was off. It happens. Yeah. It's the lack of aggression that we're talking about yep. here. He seemed completely overwhelmed by the pressure of the moment. I agree. And by the it way, was like, it was like the pressure yep. was there. He knew it was the most important game one could say the Cavaliers had in the last 20 years. Uh, uh, and the pressure mounted. But here's the thing. I thought that was the most pressure. The problem now, Skip, is the Draymond Green incident, his post-game comments, it, which led to the suspension, you're right. now makes Game 5 I agree. the most, the most important. This, this, uh, with the exception of maybe the Boston game yep. back in 2011, this might be the most important legacy game for LeBron James because if he loses tonight, Without Draymond Green. I got, you. Mm. Oh. I got oh. you. I'm, I'm with you. And by the oh. way, to your opening point about how misleading this box score line was for LeBron James, remember, he made three layups in garbage time in the last two minutes of this game that got him up to the 25. It's, you, you just got to throw him out because the game had been virtually decided at the two-minute mark. And finally, my last point to you is, an NBA insider, you know very well Mr. Smith, texted me right after the game was over on Friday night and said, and I quote, if I could pour Draymond Green into LeBron James, I would have Michael Jordan. And, and I huh. thought that was pretty insightful. I would buy that. All right. I can't poo-poo it, I tell you yeah. that much. <laughs> so the Warriors, will they be saying back to back like Drake or will Cleveland keep it pushing to a game six? back in the land. The guys make their picks for game five when we return. Stay tuned.